This is continuous wave Doppler jet in tricuspid regurgitation. You can see that this is a apical four chamber view and the cursor can be seen passing across the tricuspid wall region. This is a full jet, very clear jet, tongue shaped jet. This is an incomplete jet. This is also incomplete. This is a good jet. The change in density could be because of variation in the tricuspid regurgitation volume in different phases of respiration. In inspiration, the volume will be more and you will get a dense jet. There could also be changes because uh, the position of the cursor with respect to the tricuspid wall could also change. That could be another reason for differences in the intensity of the jets. And uh, you calculate the gradient from the velocity. Peak velocity is calculated here as 302 centimeters per second. And the corresponding gradient has been calculated by the machine as 37 millimeters of mercury. Calculation of gradient is based on the modified Bernoulli's equation. Pressure gradient is equal to 4 V squared where V is the velocity. In this case 37 was the gradient calculated and nominally you add 10 millimeters of mercury to that for the right theater pressure. So the right ventricular systolic pressure will be calculated as 47 millimeters of mercury which is elevated right ventricular systolic pressure and if there is no pulmonary stenosis the corresponding pulmonary artery systolic pressure also will be 47 millimeters of mercury that is elevated pulmonary arterial pressure or pulmonary hypertension which can be either primary or secondary to left heart disease. More common is secondary while primary is less common. In primary pressures can be very high of the order of 100 millimeters of mercury. In secondary also such high elevation is possible when there is reactive pulmonary hypertension as the secondary to mitral wall disease. Severe mitral stenosis with severe pulmonary hypertension is possible. Then in left to right shunts also it is possible AST with pulmonary hypertension, VST with pulmonary hypertension, high pressures are possible. That is the usual cause of TR. But there could be low velocity TR or non-hypertensive tricuspid regurgitation because of tricuspid wall disease, organic tricuspid wall disease as in Epstein's anomaly and carcinoid syndrome. In rheumatic heart disease, it is usually a combination of organic tricuspid wall disease as well as secondary to pulmonary hypertension. Isolated organic tricuspid regurgitation is less likely in rheumatic heart disease. Usually a nominal 10 millimeters of mercury right atrial pressure is added to the observed tricuspid regurgitation gradient to get the right ventricular systolic pressure. But when the inferior vena cava is grossly dilated and has uh, no inspiratory collapse, normally inferior vena cava collapses in inspiration. But if it is grossly dilated and there is no collapse in inspiration, then that is known as IVC plethora, plethora of the inferior vena cava. In that case, you may have to add higher values. Instead of the nominal 10 millimeters of mercury right atrial pressure, you might add 20 millimeters so that in such a situation, instead of the 47 which we got, we will calculate it as 57 millimeters of mercury. But this is from a different case and not the same case as the uh, initial tricuspid regurgitation CW jet which I had shown.